Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking all about seven ways to organize your business, be a little bit better, be a little bit more efficient, get more done, but more importantly, build a better company. So if you're a window cleaner or just somebody who likes to spend time listening to podcasts, then stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? Hey, if it's your first time here, have a look around. Uh, We've been doing this show for five years. You got tons of content, hundreds of episodes, hundreds of hours of podcasts, and some of them are tolerable. Uh, Not every episode hits it out of the park, I imagine, but either way, it's a lot of content. So go back and watch if you're a new follower, listener, whatever. This is available anywhere podcasts are. So if you're out in the field working, listen to it. Uh, any podcast, play it. it. Comes out every Friday, and it's also on YouTube. Not a lot of people watch on YouTube, but that's where we do the commenting. So if you're watching and you want to comment, do it. YouTube is awesome. Send me a message, whatever. Uh, but if you feel like you get anything out of this, or you just decide to make someone else's day, I'm a rep for windowcleaner.com. And that's what I do. I'm a sales rep. I'm a product specialist or whatever fancy term you want to call it. And I love to put orders in. That's how I make my cheddar. So if I could put your order in, if I could be your rep, if I could be your guy, let me know. 862-312-2026 is my number. Call me, text me, send me a message, let me know. And um, I would love that. I would love that. Uh, Shameless plug number two is you see the stickers, you've seen them all over, you've heard about it. It's American Window Cleaner Magazine. It's a magazine that I purchased uh, two years ago. And uh, it's absolutely changed. It is a monthly magazine that is sent to your door like real old school paper magazine, something real in your hands. Not only do you get an amazing magazine, but you, of course, get the stickers to put on all your stuff. So if you haven't yet, go and check that out. Uh, American Window Cleaner Magazine. Uh, go to awcmag.com and get yourself a subscription because you're amazing. And I want you to be amazing. And I also see when you do it. So uh, I like high five myself when I see people subscribe. So anyway, go do that. Shameless plugs over. Um, today, We're actually talking about ways to optimize your business. Organizing your business sounds super boring. So I've probably already lost a few of you with the whole organizing your business, and it just sounds dull. And you're trying to listen to something a little bit better, but I'm telling you right now, you have only so much effort, time, percentage of you, hours of the day. To be more organized is the goal that we are always chasing. Because we could always be more organized, I'm telling you. I am the most unorganized person you could possibly uh, imagine. That's why I try to surround myself with organized people. And you have ways that you can optimize your organization in your business. Getting more organized or just getting more efficient to some degree means that you have more time to work on your business. Now, say you're like, hey, I want to do eight hours a day in my, my company. Well... If there's a task that takes you two hours or it doesn't get done because you forget about it, you can get that down to 10 minutes. You just freed up an hour and 50 minutes of your time to do something else towards your business. It's huge. Always being better, more efficient is the key, the key to business. And today we're actually talking about the seven ways. Why seven, you ask? Because I was writing down a list of them and I got to seven. I was like, that's good enough. And maybe seven's catchier than five or whatever. I don't know. But there's a lot of ways. I mean, obviously, anything you do to be more efficient is amazing. You can organize your life in order to have the timing structure. Now, I'm not even talking about like pure water. Getting into pure water cuts your time in half. You're working more. I'm not talking about the working side of it. I'm talking about the running the business side of it. So if you're an owner operator, your time is really, really valuable because you're doing 40 hours in the field cleaning you got very little time but if your job is to sit behind a desk and run the show how organized are you are you getting everything done that you think you can be and i know there's a lot of people out there that struggle they're like well what do i do 
Like what, what can I do? Organization in that is huge because it allows you to make sure things don't get missed. It makes sure it allows you to make sure that the things that are getting done don't take up more time than they should. Because again, you've heard of four hour work week. It's being so optimized that four hours you can get a whole 40 hours of work done. And it is technically possible if that's what you want to do, but another side of it is okay. Well, if you're only working four hours and you're getting four hours of work, what if you worked eight? You'd have 80 hours of work you could get done in eight hours. That's crazy. You want to go live on a beach somewhere? That's cool too. But if you want to advance your business and keep the the, the wheels moving forward, you got to organize. I know, I know. It's boring. But let's jump into it. The first one, and I bring this up because this is a very little one but it's very big in the grand scheme of things. And it is absolutely shocking to me how many people don't do this. Um, It's having a business account. Having a business checking account or something that's separate is really, really shockingly important. Now, we're starting little. I know, I know. But I'm going to give you the idea behind this and you can tailor anything else to this. But if you're running account, LLC, sole proprietor, doesn't matter. If you are running it out of your own account, it is next to impossible to know where deductions come from, to know where you're at financially, to know profits, to know pay, to know all of that. So having a dedicated business account or a business checking account allows you to track everything. It also allows you, which I had an awesome... Uh, suggestion from uh, somebody who had sent it in and I'm I'm still planning on doing something like this but it's about a bookkeeper and how to really get going on that side but if you have a dedicated account now you can have a bookkeeper I have one that just goes through the accounts and make sure I know what's going on there right dedicating an account means you separate the funds and the money is what you need to know how much money do you have right now that you can advertise with if you're just guessing, I don't know, I could maybe th- you don't know. That means your forecasting is not on point. That means your uh, existing cash is not on point. If you don't know what's going on, then the problem is, is that you don't know what you can do with it, right? I'm sitting right next to the brand new uh, zero, um, uh, zero Pure Revolution Max Plus. The new Plus system is out. It's a $3,000 system. It's amazing. Do you have the money to buy that right now, though? If you don't have dedicated accounts or even something separated to really, really know, you don't you look at your accounts and be like, well, I know that my mortgage is this much. So, yeah, I have enough. Like, that's the hard part in business. And it's getting those numbers. You know, guys know I'm numbers freaks, but getting those numbers is so good to dial in to know specifically what it is. And if you're brand new business, you're still maybe running out of a personal account. You're paying with personal funds. And your personal business is all matched up. So it may be something you want to get a dedicated uh, account. That more or less comes in for the smaller guys. I get it. But it's the concepts of why you want to do this over what you're doing, right? Right. The next one that I know a lot of you, uh, 99.72% of you, uh, that's technical terms. Uh, <laughs> don't do this. And it's have a marketing calendar. Now, I know. I beat that like a dead horse. But hear me out. Let me explain what a marketing calendar does for you. Marketing calendar, in its essence, is super simple. It is week one. Monday, we do this. Monday, I do... I'll give you just examples. Monday, I do a Craigslist posting. I update my ads on uh, Facebook Marketplace and I um, tailor my services on Home Advisor. Whatever those are. That may be like the lower in ones, right? Lower uh, uh, pay versions, basically. Tuesday, depending on how much you're putting into your marketing, uh, we send out our um, uh, marketing material, or EDDM, as long as there is no rain forecasted for Thursday, Friday. We send it out on Tuesday. That means everything's planned on Tuesday. Wednesday, I do XYZ. 
Maybe you're doing door hangers or you're planning four hours a week to do route sales, right? Maybe you're doing your follow-ups, right? On Thursday, we do our, um, you know, clip flyers if you're doing those, which I hate, right? Maybe on on Thursday, you're uh, optimizing your website. Maybe you're changing pictures on your website, right? Maybe Friday is all social media, you're doing all your social media posts, setting them all up, and then scheduling them to go out through the week, right? Marketing doesn't have to be all pay. If you're doing EDDM, if you're doing uh, Facebook ads, Google ads, if you're doing AdSense and SEO work, if you have the, the awesome Mr. Monk doing all that for you, maybe you're tailoring things, you're talking with them, or you're going over what needs to change or what you want to do. Maybe that's all running in the background. Now you can focus on other things, right? Any way that you do it and any budget you have, it has to be scheduled because here's what happens. The reason a marketing calendar works is that when you need to market, marketing can be advertising or anything along those things, but we'll, we'll say advertising. When you want to advertise or need to advertise, it's the busiest it ever is for you. The best day that you can advertise is your busiest day of the year for calls. Say one day you just get 50 calls. That is the absolute best day you could have advertised because so many people have it. Whatever is triggering the barometer or anything else, I don't know why everybody calls all at once, but that's when it's in people's heads and you have to put it out there. People go, well, man, I am slow. I need to put an ad out there. No one cares. It's slow for a reason. Even if putting an ad out there, you're not going to make people who aren't thinking about it go, oh, well, let's do that. I'm really hungry. Let's get it. But when it's hot, that's when you advertise. And when you advertise, when it's hot, you're already busy. So what happens is most people don't advertise when it's busy because they're too busy. It's a double-edged sword, right? If you're busy and you're just, oh, my God, today just flew by. I never had a – I didn't even – I didn't even get to go to the bathroom today. I didn't eat lunch. I did whatever. No matter what happens that day, if you're in a marketing calendar, that means if it's Wednesday and it's busy, it gets done. It's on my marketing calendar. I do this first. I do this first. It will absolutely change your business if you start advertising when it's busy. Now, I know when I'm recording this, it's getting into slow time for most of us, but let me explain. The best time to advertise a cheeseburger is during dinner time, right? If you do it at six in the morning, I'm sure there's a couple people that might want it. Most people aren't gonna buy, like, ooh, wow, a burger, fries, and a drink. Most people aren't doing that at six in the morning, right? That's when you do a, a, a eggs and bacon on the, on the screen right? Or something. You advertise when it's in people's heads because it's already a lot of the work's done by their own brain. You're just pushing them over the edge. Now you go, well, yeah, but when I'm busy, I'm booked out four weeks. If you're booked out more than that, by the way, hire some people. <laughs> but if I'm booked out, say four weeks, whatever it is, then awesome. Because guess what? Now you're booking even more people and you're pushing out and saying, hey, sorry, this is the busiest time of year for us. We have a first scheduled appointment is four weeks and one day. Obviously, you're going to throw in a bunch more work. Well, now maybe you can hire. Maybe you can optimize. Maybe you can change some things and get uh, more done. But I'm going to fill that space. And what happens is by doing that is when you advertise when you're hot, it fills up the times when you're not. Now, here's another thing. If you're talking to people, you're doing that bit over the phone, they yeah, God, man, it's a lot more than I thought, you know, blah, blah, blah. Instead of just going, oh, there's a discount, you're... Okay, it's busy. You don't need to do that. But what you can do is say, well, I'll tell you what. Right now is our busy time of year. It is our most premium slot. If I can put you in uh, December uh, 13th, if I can do you December 13th, I can knock $50 off because that's a slower time for us. Now you're taking the people when they want it right now, let's book it. They'll still book it then. If you're booking and it's August, it's busy, right? We'll, we'll do the spring idea. It's March, it's April, depending on your area, it's busy. 
Somebody calls you, go, I need my windows done. Because it's in their brain, you've advertised, they want it. It's 30 calls today. Awesome. We can get you in June 7th. Right? Whatever that 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 push out is. They go, okay, great. They, they want it now, so they're going to book now, even though it comes down the road. Most people are not going to shop somewhere else. If they just call you, you say, yes, here's your appointment, here's your price, boom, book, done. It's off their plate. That is the gratification. I had a thing I needed to do, I did it. Doesn't mean that it has to get done right then and there. In their brain, they think they need it, right? But here's the thing, if you have to, oh man, I gotta, I gotta get the oil changed. Man, I gotta get the oil changed. I gotta get the oil changed. I gotta get the oil changed. Ring, ring, ring. Yeah, I need to set up an appointment for my oil. Okay, cool, what day is it? Awesome, click. Whew. Awesome, all right. Got that oil change all scheduled and set up. It's off their plate. So you hit them while they're hot, you book them, for when you have time. You can move that time around. It doesn't mean, because people think that, well, I'm busy right now, I'm four weeks out, I, I, can't, I can't add anybody on right now. No, but you're not busy around. <laughs> like you, you have other times, push them on when you're not busy. So what that does is it takes your, your slow times, right? Say we'll exaggerate, you're brand new, right? You have four months of slow in the winter, four months of slow in the summer, we'll say. It's not really how it happens, but you know what I'm saying. Now, all of a sudden, because you're doing so much booking when you're hot, they'll shrink. Now, you only got two months and two months. Now, you keep shrinking. You keep doing this. You keep doing this. And all of a sudden, your short time, your short season is like three weeks. In those three weeks, you're now filling those times with people who wanted to maybe pay a little less. They weren't time sensitive. They wanted to. Now, in those three weeks, you may never have a slow time again. Because you advertised when you were busy, not because you advertised when you're slow. If it is February 3rd and you're listening to this, which by the way, if it's February 3rd and you're listening to this, comment and tell me this is a random date. Anyway, if you're, it's February 3rd and you're, at, you're, you're listening to this and you're slow, which most of the country would be, don't go, man, oh man, I better throw... $10,000 to some ads and spark up some... No, it's February. You're not going to get people interested in window cleaning. You could sell window cleaning for $20 and there's probably not going to be a lot of people that buy. You could take away all the limitations and you know I don't sell on price for window cleaning or services in general, but you could take away any objection possible and you get to a genuine rejection not an objection a rejection where february 3rd people are like yeah no I just don't, don't want it right now no right i don't even want to spend 100 bucks on it it's just it's just not the time but give me a call in a couple months right so don't advertise when you're slow because nobody wants it don't sell a cheeseburger at six in the morning it would make no sense for you to spend any advertising to sell a cheeseburger at six in the morning. Even if you pick up one or two people, the cost of acquisition or the price in which you paid to get that person, right? Say say you spend $10,000. You do this ad, big marketing thing, and only one person came to you. You've really screwed something up, by the way, if you did that. But say one person came to you. How much did it cost you to get that one person? It costs you $10,000 to get that customer that you just booked for 200 bucks. See, at the cost of acquisition works is that over time that guy will hopefully, I mean, that's a long time, 200 bucks, maybe pay for that, maybe. But our goal is to spend $10,000 and get $100,000 worth of work. And not only did it pay for it, we just, instead of spending anything, we just made 80,000, right? We talk about this all the time too, is advertising when done right. You're never spending anything you're making. People always go, oh man, I'm gonna spend $20,000 next month in ads. No, no, you're gonna make $100,000. You're not spending anything, you're making money. You only spend money if people don't call you, right? So anyway, marketing calendars get you in that mindset. On a marketing calendar for the business side, there's another thing and it's a scheduled maintenance day. This sounds ridiculous, I know, but if you have a maintenance day every month, meaning that the first Friday of the month, you always have a half day. 
of work. You always book that. And that's because the second half of the day, everybody is in the shop. Everybody's on the trucks. They're doing your oil changes. They're changing out wipers. They're getting your equipment up and running. They're tightening clamps. They're, they're checking on brushes and hoses and getting anything ordered. If there's a maintenance day, it never gets missed. What ends up happening, and I've seen a bunch of equipment like that, and I know you guys get busy, and this is why. And obviously I'm partial because it's equipment, and I sell equipment. But guys will have water-fed systems that are so used, abused, and beat up that parts are rusting off of them, right? Fittings are leaking. There's duct tape and, and silicone, and there's, there's all this stuff. They just hobble through, and the reason is, is because up until this point, they have not had a maintenance date. We get people all the time, too, especially new into water, for they're like, oh, this, this just spins. Tighten the clamp. What? Tighten the clamp. Oh, well, I didn't know I was supposed to tighten the clamps. Yes, it's, you have to maintain your equipment. You don't buy a vehicle three years later like, yeah, the engine blew up. Stupid thing. What did, how many, didn't you see that when you were doing oil changes? They're like, oil changes? No, no, I bought it. It's only three years old. Why would I do oil changes? What? 3,000, what? Say you drive a lot in the first month of owning a car and you get your 3,000, you understand they're synthetic and not. But anyway, say you need an oil change after a month. It doesn't matter that your car is only a month old. It matters that you need to do the maintenance. It's like gear, squeegees, channels, handles. Oh, my handle cracked. I've, only, I've had it now for about 12 years, but what can I do? It cracked because you didn't notice that it was cracking. It's a handle. It's 20 bucks. Buy a new one. If you want to fix something, okay, JB Weld it, but how are you going to do that if it's out in the field every day? This is why you see these hobbled together stuff is because they don't do maintenance. Now, on the opposite side of that, you have work trucks. Every company, every one of you has work vehicles. Even if they're personal vehicles, it's still a vehicle that you're driving around, right? Maybe the oil changes aren't getting done, the brakes squeak, the tires are low, the uh, equipment is in shambles, you can't find anything, maybe the bins aren't there. You're not doing maintenance on your equipment. Why? Because you're so busy. Maybe not this time of year. Or all of a sudden, you know, in January you have the time, you go through everything and it's too late in a lot of it. Schedule maintenance, everything takes maintenance. Every piece of equipment from traditional to not, Right, you go through your rubbers, you make sure that stuff's not nicking or dead or done, or what do you do? Cross them off, blades aren't rusted, you got enough steel wool. Make sure you go through all that. Yes, it's equipment, but yes, it's vehicles, it's shirts, it's it's everything that you have on you from, from the binder that you carry your stuff to the uh, updated uh, print material. You have to do maintenance, you have to schedule that. Doing that will help you organize everything else. Because you're not going to get caught with your pants down. And speaking of, if you're prepping envelopes or stuffing envelopes, which I do and I love and I think that's amazing. That is, by the way, when you go to a job, you hand them an envelope and in the envelope is the bill and the satisfaction form and the insurance or whatever else you want to put in there. I also stuff them with different services, surveys, anything that I need. Do that the day before. If you're prepping for that day, it will always be done and ready. How many times you get in and you're like, oh man, we got a big deal. We got to get out of here. Well, then you don't have your invoices. You're not collecting payment. You don't have satisfaction forms. You don't have business cards or your plastic gift cards or anything. If you don't have any of that stuff, you've ruined that day. You've ruined all those customers. You can't get it back. You can't advertise back to them. You can't solidify a relationship with them if you miss it. Stuff your envelopes beforehand. Be prepared for the day the day before. At the end of the day... Now, by the way, if you're like, oh, it's 6 o'clock and I'm tired. Well, then you didn't optimize your day. Optimize your day so you can get done at 4, so you can do this stuff. But get it done that day so it is done 100% because at the end of the day, you have more time than the beginning of the day. Every single day you've ever done work, the end of the day, you have more time than the beginning of the day. Because eventually your jobs are done for the day, right? If it's the beginning of the day, your jobs are never done before the day. It's just every minute gets you closer to when you have to leave. At the end of the day, it's every minute gets you closer to when you got back. At the end of the day, prep your envelopes. Prep your day's stuff so that it's ready. Prep your buckets. Prep your tools. Prep your everything you need to. Prep it the night before. Organize your life. Organize your company. Speaking of uh, scheduling, too, 
or not scheduling, speaking of organization, scheduling is a big one. Schedule your month in blocks of cities you are. Here's something that you know, but you've overlooked. Every one of us has areas where even if it's in the same town, some of you Texas guys have these giant counties you work. But even if it's there, but it's an hour away one way, and I got these other jobs, if you're not optimizing location, you're like, oh, I'm over there, then I got to drive all the way back over here, and then I go halfway back again. Okay, so if you go to XYZ town, it's not quite as uh, busy there, but you're there quite a bit. Every Tuesday, you're there. So that means that if the next two or three Tuesdays are full, but the rest of the schedule's open, but it's in that town, they go on the fourth Tuesday. Because then you're filling that day. Then you can open up another day for that area if they're that busy. But scheduling blocks of, hey, we're always in this town on Tuesdays. We're always in this town on Wednesdays. We're always on this time. Well, what happens when I get busy in the other place? Then you change the days. All of a sudden, you have lots of Tuesdays. Well, now Tuesdays and Fridays, you're in this area. By doing that, it cuts down your driving time. And if I'm cutting out an hour of drive time between jobs... That's another hour I could be doing something else. You don't get paid for your hour of drive time. All that does is it allows the truck to be driving instead of stopped and you cleaning. It makes it so that you do not get to do as much stuff as you need to do because of drive time. So why not take drive time as serious as speeding you up? People are like, man, I got to get a water fit. It'll speed me up. Okay, cool. You doing blocked You doing uh, blocked days? No. Okay, well, you got one thing done. Water fed, it will double your speed on anything with a ladder. I'll guarantee that. By the way, I send your angry emails of giving me the one or two occasions that uh, that may not be exactly twice as fast. And by the way, in water fed, if you are still listening, uh, if you say, well, I can beat you on a ladder. No, you can't. That's not possible. You still have to move the ladder. You still have to detail. Look, there's things you have to do that, anyway. I digress. It gets me so angry. People just want to argue about the water fed thing sometimes. Anyway, if you're not optimizing the calendar, but you're optimizing other things, calendars do. Optimize it, optimize drive time, optimize area, and you will get more done. Simple as that. And getting more done, why not delegate? There's certain things in your company as it gets bigger that you can delegate. Now, eventually... You may have office staff, admin staff, that type of thing. But until that point, guess what? Talk about bookkeepers. Somebody else will do your taxes. We talked about payroll. Somebody else will do payroll. If it takes that off your schedule or your sleeve or your whatever, now you don't have to worry about that. There's certain things where you could pay a a payroll company 100 bucks a month to take that. And you're like, oh, man, that's $100 a month. And oh, yeah, it's Okay, how much time do you take doing payroll a month? So say you put together payroll. It takes you an hour a week and two hours on the days that uh, it's going to schedule. It may even take you more than that, right? But you're talking about six hours a week. Six hours at $99 to have somebody else have to deal with that. Not only on all the ramifications, making sure that it's right. Making sure that if audits happen, they take care of that. All that other stuff, six hours back in your life as the owner of the company, I'm guaranteeing you can make more than 99 bucks in six hours. I hope. Not, not doing cleaning, but selling stuff or doing whatever. Delegate the things that somebody else is really good at. You'll be surprised at how cheap it is to delegate. And the biggest one, if you're still here and you've got one thing about how to organize your business... You're like, dude, I want to grow. I want to be stronger. I want to do everything. These are great ideas. And yes, it'll free me up some time, but uh, I need that one. Here is that one. Schedule time for sales. Schedule time for sales. I hope all of you are doing route. I love route. Um, But route, you need to stop in. You need to do that. You need to do follow-ups. You need to send those commercial contracts or bid packets or whatever else. And if you don't schedule that stuff, you're out in the field, you're doing whatever else, it will get missed. Two weeks go by, you're like, oh man, I haven't sold in like weeks. Schedule sales time. If you set up an appointment with me right now, me and you, and you're like, hey, Jersey, I want to talk. Can we talk at this time? 
you wouldn't do anything else because of that, right? If you schedule the time for uh, an HVAC guy to come to your house, or you schedule the dentist appointment, then what happens is like, oh, uh, Tuesday at three, I got a dentist appointment. Nothing gets in the way. Nothing gets prioritized. You're not like, oh man, well, yeah, I'm, I'm busy. Let me uh, do this other thing, and I'll I'll, uh, I'll do the dentist appointment instead of three. I'll do it at four. You can't do that. But people do that with sales because it's not always their f- most fun thing. It's not always their favorite thing. But what happens is, is that people then move it and then they don't do it. Schedule it. Schedule like a dentist appointment. You make sure you're off the phone. You make sure it's quiet. You make sure everything so you can get to your dentist appointment. That's how you do sales. And that's how you do your company. Get it bigger and better than it ever has been. Anyway, I know this was a boring episode. I hope you got something out of it. And if you did, I would absolutely love for you to use me as a rep. That's what I do. You can even just text me and be like, yo, Jersey, everything's in my cart. And me pushing that in instead of you, I get credit. It costs you nothing extra. And I get to live my lavish lifestyle of uh, $10 sweatshirts. So, yeah, thank you. Hair gel uh, does not buy itself. So definitely (laughs) do that. Get a magazine, by the way. If you haven't yet, go to awcmag.com. Subscribe to the magazine. Not only does it help the industry, because we have this awesome publication, there are articles and things to better your business. You can nerd out. You could be that guy who has a window cleaning magazine and all your friends will be jealous. (laughs) Not really. They'll be confused, but you will be better than your competition. So who cares if they're confused? Get the stickers. Get everything else. AWCMAG.com. Get a subscription, please. And uh, either way, organize your business. Make sure you get more done going into the new year, but more importantly, go out there and be epic.